Because of the speed of proton transfer and the fact that acid-base processes are always in equilibrium in organic reaction mechanisms, we use equilibrium constants to quantify acidity and basicity. Specifically to quantify acidity, which is much more common, we use Ka and its more natural equivalent, pKa, and Kb, which is the basicity analog, which also has an analogous value, pKb, which is a lot more human-friendly than Kb itself. In this video, we're going to formalize our definitions of these terms and recall how they were defined in introductory chemistry. The acidity constant, or acid dissociation constant, Ka, is an equilibrium constant that reflects the tendency of a hydrogen to act as an acid in a fixed solvent. And this is usually water. All of the Ka's that you've seen previously in introductory chemistry were in water. But because many organic molecules are not soluble in water or are very, very weakly acidic with respect to water, you also see dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO, being used as the solvent here. The fixed solvent is important so that we can compare the acidity of different molecules using Ka values. It's worth thinking just a little bit about the reaction associated with a Ka value, which involves proton transfer to this fixed solvent to form the conjugate base of the acid and the conjugate acid of the solvent, which here I'm representing generically as HS+. Every hydrogen within a molecule in a distinct chemical environment has a unique pKa value. So for example, the hydrogen here has a pKa value that's very different than the hydrogen attached to nitrogen. And to write an expression for Ka, we simply apply the idea of the equilibrium expression to the reaction shown here, writing products over reactants. Ka values can vary a lot, and they span a huge range with many, many orders of magnitude involved. For this reason, to make the numbers more human-friendly, we use pKa, where the p operator refers to taking the negative base 10 logarithm of whatever follows, which in this case is Ka. Because this converts the exponent in Ka into just a plain vanilla number, pKa's are much easier to interpret than Ka values. The basicity constant is analogous, but reflects the tendency of an electron pair to act as a base. Kb isn't just the inverse of Ka, because we're again using a fixed solvent. And so the reaction associated with Kb still involves the reaction of the solvent with the molecule of interest. But now, we think of the solvent as having a proton that gets donated to the basic lone pair. Notice, as a brief aside, that DMSO, like water, has protons that can be removed by basic groups. It's amphiprotic, just like water. This is one of the reasons it's used to measure Ka and Kb values for organic molecules. The products of that lone pair acting as a base are the conjugate acid of the molecule of interest and the conjugate base of the solvent, S-. Kb is defined as the equilibrium constant for this reaction. And once again, we can just write Kb by applying the principles of chemical equilibrium to this reaction. If we refer to the conjugate acid here as Hb+, Kb is equal to the product of the concentration of Hb plus at equilibrium and the concentration of S minus at equilibrium divided by the concentration of intact B at equilibrium. And pKb is just the negative base 10 logarithm of that value. The exact numbers here are really not important, but a really important conclusion that we can draw by working with Ka and Kb values is that the stronger an acid is, the weaker its conjugate base is. The weaker an acid is, the stronger its conjugate base is. This is what's known as the conjugate seesaw. As the reactivity of an acid or base goes up, the reactivity of its conjugate goes down and vice versa. They're related like the two ends of a seesaw. We can use this notion of the conjugate seesaw to make stability comparisons and acidity comparisons much easier. And let me show you what I mean by this. If we look at the molecule on the left, which is a neutral acid, we see that it has a pKa in water of negative 2.8. This is quite an acidic species. And the most acidic proton in this molecule, which will become clear when we start talking about the structural factors that dictate acidity, is the one I'm highlighting in blue. If we know that pKa value, we don't really need to know anything else about the stability or reactivity of the conjugate base. Would we expect this to be very basic? Well, of course not. Its conjugate acid is a strong acid with a pKa of negative 2.8. And so we should expect this anion, the conjugate base, to be hardly basic at all and have a pKb 
of something like 16.8, assuming both of these are measured in water. The number is not important. The important point here is that this is a very stable anion, and just knowing the pKa value for the conjugate acid is enough for us to conclude this. Because of the conjugate seesaw and the fact that Ka for an acid, Kb for A minus are related mathematically, you'll only most of the time see pKa values published, since pKb values for conjugate bases can be determined directly from these pKa values. Say we wanted to compare the stability of this anion to the stability of this anion above and we were given the information that the pKa of the conjugate acid of that species, which has a hydrogen here where there's a lone pair and a negative charge in the conjugate base, is something like 35. Well, this proton is clearly much less acidic than the acidic proton up here, as evidenced by the difference in pKa values. This is, allows us to conclude, without doing any calculations at all, that this anion is much more basic than the anion above, and that this molecule is less stable than the anion above. All of this is due to the conjugate seesaw, and it shows the utility of comparing pKa values to make comparisons not just of acidity, but of the basicity of the associated conjugate bases. This also suggests a quantitative approach to evaluating whether an acid-base reaction is favorable or not. In other words, whether at equilibrium we will have more products than reactants or not. We're going to formalize that process in the next video.